Hi, my name is Matt. Welcome to my channel if you're new here. I'm a weekend do-it-yourself automotive enthusiast and my channel is dedicated to helping do-it-yourselfers to properly and accurately diagnose their car symptoms without throwing parts at them. On my channel, myself and my subscribers would take a car that has, say, a rough idle and instead of throwing plugs and wires at it to try to see if that smooths it out, we would only do that if we did diagnostics that scientifically show conclusive evidence that the secondary ignition system is faulty. So applying that scientific methodological approach to things, I'm going to apply that to my first and maybe only tool review because I really don't do tool reviews on my channel. But we are going to make an exception because this tool happens to be particularly awesome, as will be this review. So what we have here is the DCF880B. This is a half inch cordless impact, surprisingly small for its size, listed at 150 foot pounds torque, believe it or not. It's got a 20 volt lithium ion battery with a fuel gauge as they call it. It's actually just a charge indicator. And what I did was I bought this as part of a kit. And the kit is actually DCF880M and it comes with two batteries a fast one hour charger, and it all comes in this durable blow molded case. Um, I also separately bought this cutoff tool, which uses the same battery. And the idea was I wanted to get a system that would allow me to basically take my air tools to the junkyard. Um, being used to air tools when you work in the salvage yard like I do often on uh, every other Saturday or so, you get very frustrated using just your hand tools. And I was hoping that this tool would be a good solution for me to bring my air tools to the salvage yard. So the purpose of this video, we are going to scientifically test it and see, will it live up to expectations? Notice this thing is incredibly small for a half inch. It is actually the same size as the 3 8 model, which is a DC823 and on that 3 8 model it's going to be 90 foot-pounds of torque so uh, quite a bit less than the 150 foot-pounds of this similar sized model. My thinking on this was pretty simple by getting this model I have the same accessibility under the hood as I would with the 3 8 model with the potential torque uh, to remove lug nuts and things and uh, difficult bolts and rusty bolts and stuff. So a little more versatility, I thought. There's also kind of a monster model, a DW059K, which is 300 foot-pounds of torque. Amazing for a battery-operated tool. However, that one is easily three times the size of this thing. So again, I traded off some of the torque for the accessibility and the small size. Obviously, by just adapting a 3 8 half inch adapter, I can use the tool as a regular ratchet under the hood. It does have variable speed, which is very nice. It's got really long battery life. It's still at full charge, even though I've been using this for a number of days and um, the equivalent of probably taking off a couple sets of wheels. You notice it has LED lights. Uh, the advertisement says that this is to prevent shadows because nothing, nothing interferes with my ability to work effectively more than shadows. The tool also has uh, reverse and forward, which is totally ambidextrous. Um, so left to right handed people could use this tool equally well. It actually comes with a three year warranty and even a one year recondition warranty. So if for any reason the tool doesn't seem to be performing as well as you expect it should, you can send it in and they will recondition it for free within the first year. So very minimal risk with this tool. So obviously the elephant in the room, how is this going to perform? What is its maximum power? And is it going to be equivalent to an air tool? Well, of course it won't be equivalent to an air tool, but I'm expecting this thing to perform better than some of the reviews I've read. So as you probably well know, if you're seriously shopping for a tool like I did, the only really trustworthy, reliable resource in the universe for information is from the general public on the internet. So in looking at the websites, I found that overwhelmingly, this little guy did get mostly very, very good reviews, but it did get a few negative and mediocre reviews from people who said they were dissatisfied with the power. So we're going to scientifically test and see how it performs but uh, they said that it wouldn't remove lug nuts, things like that. They were very disappointed. Um, let's look at a typical review from one of the uh, people that apparently the people who write reviews on these websites on Amazon and eBay are the same people that write for Yahoo News. 
So here is a three star out of five review from Bob. And Bob states, I did not buy this tool. I have never used it. However, I am giving it a three star rating because it is a DeWalt. Therefore, I am assuming that it is probably pretty good. Wow, Bob, what a great review. Thank you so much for sharing that information, which really helps me to make an educated decision and make sure that I don't waste my hard earned Skrilla on a tool because I am not well enough informed about actual user experience. So uh, you know what, brah, it's people like you that make the internet known to be the reliable source of information that everybody knows it is. I can clearly see that the bar is raised pretty high on some of these reviews done before me. So I guess I'm gonna have to get to it and make sure that I do a good job of showing the performance capability of this tool if I'm gonna keep up with the Joneses here. So what I'm doing is I'm actually chasing the threads on the lugs and also chasing the threads on the lug nuts here to create two identical torques that I can compare with an air tool and with the DeWalt tool. What I'm going to do is torque each of our lugs to 90 foot pounds. 90 foot pounds being because for your do it yourself or they're typically going to want to remove lug nuts and the vast majority of your family cars and economy cars and things are going to have a maximum torque on the lugs of about 90 pounds. If you have a performance car or a truck or something, of course, it's going to be more than 90 pounds and we'll get to there. But the idea is to show that just this basic little guy here is going to have surprising amount of torque to be able to remove lug nuts at 90 pounds. If you can remove a lug nut at 90 pounds, you can easily remove anything under hood, which is what I'm looking to do for the most part, so I will be very happy if it performs accordingly. And again, some people said it wouldn't remove lug nuts, but they didn't say what they were torqued at. There's one, and this one is identically torqued. So let's go ahead and use my up until recently go-to tool. This is a um, just a typical do-it-yourselfer air impact tool that most anybody would be very happy with the performance. It's 500 foot-pounds of torque. And what we're going to do is see how long it takes to break that lug nut off and remove it using this tool. All right. I've got a timer here. Let's get it to reverse. Ah, a little bit hard to get that on there because there's a lot of shadow. All right, and that took about, well, I stopped it at two seconds there, but that was easily under two seconds. We're gonna switch right over to the battery operated tool, make sure it's on reverse. And let's see how long it takes this guy to remove that 90 foot pounds. All right, two seconds, not too shabby. All right, and in this next one, what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and see how it performs at 120 foot-pounds. All right, that's a lot of torque. And at 120 foot-pounds, now you're talking about the ability to do things like suspension components, maybe some uh, crankshaft harmonic balancer bolts, some pretty heavy-duty things. So let's go ahead and do our air tool first. All right, and again, this will be 120 foot-pounds at uh, our error impact with 500 foot-pounds reverse torque. <laughs> All right, and it uh, still did it in about a second. Let's go ahead and switch now over to our DeWalt impact. Make sure we're on reverse and see how this performs at 120 foot-pounds. Now, mind you, if it does not remove this, I am not going to be disappointed. I'm still plenty impressed with the power, given the fact that this tool is considerably smaller than its opponent. But if it removes it, I'm going to be really happy. Let's see. Seem to be struggling with a shadow despite the light. All right, there we go. All right. Three seconds, very impressive. 
All right, so let's do this now um, because I really don't want to do a video on how to replace a broken lug. I don't want to go up too much past the 120 foot-pounds of torque and see what the maximum reverse capability is. Like I said, I'm plenty satisfied with 120. I'm sure it can easily do more. But what we're going to do is go ahead and see what the maximum forward torque is now. Obviously an important consideration. Will the tool be able to tighten the lug nuts to at least 100 foot-pounds so that we can be sure we can secure pretty much any wheel. So let's go ahead and run this thing until it doesn't turn anymore. All right, right there, it stopped turning. And let's go ahead and see if we can measure how much torque it delivered. All right, and that is easily going to be well over 100 foot pounds. So uh, let me go ahead and just set it up to 120 because I'm pretty confident that it's at least that. All right, no movement at all of the lug nut. Let's go up to 130. Oh, there's some movement there. Okay, so it's somewhere between 120 and 130 foot-pounds that it was able to deliver, deliver a maximum forward torque. All right, I think you have to admit, this is a really amazing, amazing tool review video, but also let's not forget an amazing tool. So what have we learned from this experiment? Well, pretty much that most people that write reviews on Amazon and eBay are idiots. Because if you can't remove a lug nut using this thing, you are either reviewing the wrong tool or you do not know how to install a lug nut. So in closing, let's review some of the things that I really like about this and maybe some things that I'm maybe not as crazy about. And of course, the one thing that I love the most about it is the fact that it lived way beyond my expectations for what I wanted it for. I initially wanted it when I go to the junkyard to be able to very quickly and efficiently remove uh, parts and everything without struggling with my hand tools as much. This is a huge time saver and that can be a big deal at the junkyard because, well, at least at the junkyard that I go to, um, time savings is very important because a lot of people are trying to get out of the daylight before they get busted by INS. This is the tool that will help you with that. All right, and my apologies, my apologies on that last scene. Um, I did say something that was terribly politically incorrect, um, and I apologize, so please don't send hate mail. It's not called a junkyard. It is called a salvage yard, or better yet, an automotive recycling facility. So I really apologize for that on that last scene. Don't send hate mail. As far as things that maybe I'm not as crazy about, Really minor thing, but you'll notice it's actually a little bit louder than the air impact during the impact phase. Once it breaks loose, it's extremely quiet, which is, again, another plus. It's much quieter than my air tools. There is one other thing, though, that I did observe. Um, while using the tool, you can really smell kind of an electrical burning smell, and I wanted to show you something here. All right, we'll see if this shows up in the camera, but you can see... It's very sparky. And honestly, this is the first actual battery operated tool that I've ever bought. Um, I do have some electrical ones, of course. And I'm assuming that that sparking is probably perfectly normal, but I just wanted to point that out because I do not believe I'm gonna be using this if I'm pulling a sending unit or a fuel pump or removing a fuel rail or something like that because of the, the sparks. But um, that's really actually the only thing I've noticed about it that maybe I'm not particularly crazy about. So anyway, uh, that will conclude this tool review. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you for watching and thank you even more for subscribing.